God save the Queen! God save the Queen! Hurrah! 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 Let us go on a journey to a distant land long ago to the castle of Warwick where your noble host, the Earl of Warwick and his household will welcome you to celebrate the joy of light during this darkest of seasons. Also, we welcome our modern guests, nobles from surrounding estates, the court of St. James and Queen Elizabeth herself. We who wear the rampant lion of the Earl on our chests are in his service. We have been assembled from across his wide estates to extend his hospitality to you tonight. To entertain, the Earl is going to offer dancing, a comedy by William Shakespeare, music and singing, and also a sumptuous feast. For decades, our community has welcomed guests, friends, neighbors, visitors from around the globe even, to join us in this presentation of what might have happened back in Elizabeth's time in Warwick Castle. I'm Cheryl Fowler, and I'm the chair of the Elizabethan Madrigal Feast. I'm Mary Myers, and for the last 22 or so years, I've been queen of the scullery for the Elizabethan Madrigal Feast. My name is Judy James, and I am the writer and director of the Elizabethan Madrigal Feast since its inception in 1988. Back in 1988, one of our members brought something amazingly interesting to the cultural development meeting at the Center for the Arts and Sciences. In the 80s, my parents, both of them actually, in a small town in Southern Illinois, uh, helped the community put on something remotely similar. Uh, they called it the Elizabethan Madrigal Feast. And so it was a good community building activity and they did it. Uh, for about 10 years every year, and then they got tired of it. But I thought when we saw what was going on at the center after we moved here in the early 80s, all of the talent that, that was involved in the theater groups, uh, that it was an idea that could be used as a cultural activity. And she brought up um, a program, and the program was from a madrigal feast that was presented in another state uh, in middle America, and she started describing the event, that there was music and there was food. Food and decor and whatever needed to be done. So it was an opportunity for people with talent to have a, a stage. Everybody was on board and it was almost instantaneous. And people began to volunteer to do this and that. That sort of made what the outline of what the feast was going to be and how it was going to work. And so it began. Shell Fowler was and still is chairman of the feast and there was an army of volunteers to assist her. There were so many decisions to be made. Presentation trays, rehearsals. We're off and running and we had to find people to take care of, of the food and figuring out how to serve it. And The scullery is, you know, the, the downstairs part of the Elizabethan process of putting on a meal. We have our own little scullery back in the green room, which is not set up for that. You know, it's really um, not a commercial kitchen. It's, it's hectic back there. We came to the realization that we weren't going to be able to do a historical show. This was not a Williamsburg experience. This needed to be what hospitality is about. And so we tried to um, build it to people's strengths. A way of bringing, adding something to the show that makes it important. 
so I had to do something, you know. So I, I can keep a budget. You're in the show. You're in the back. It's you're serving an important purpose. You know, we in the scullery are making it happen. So many costumes to be built. We can just do me, um, medieval costumes, and nobody will know the difference, and it'd be much easier to do. <laughs> Said, I'll know the difference. Me personally, as a as a designer, if I always start with the fabric. Uh, if, I, if I know what we need to do, then rather than deciding what we want to do, then go try to find it, that's just an impossible task. And then I let the fabrics tell me what to do. I have always enjoyed theater. I was the kind of kid who would go and um, get all the kids together in the neighborhood and find out what they wanted to do and write a story for them, and then we would act it out. I, I was somewhat afraid to start with William Shakespeare in the first year. I, I've always found, found him daunting, and the more I worked with him, I found him to be a personal friend. Lights, sound, Elizabethan corsets. For the people who work on it, it's collaborative. It's collaboration, because collaboration is deeply satisfying to human beings. The, the theater, um, establishes its own community. The Madrigal Feast has, has helped feed the theater with talent that, because it's something that they can't do anywhere else. Singers that are also engineers and lawyers and, and they come out at night and weekends and they can do this and have friends that are other talented people. It's a, it's a real opportunity to establish an artistic community, I think. I know my scale. Read this <laughs> Bianca takes him. See. Consider his love. D. Have pity or I'll die. <laughs> Is the Blue Jays call? <laughs> more precious than the Lark's room. Because he's more beautiful? Or is the viper better than the fish because his painted skin is more pleasing to the eye? No. And neither are you worse for this main array. It's, you know, it's a cultural icon, I think. Where else would you find something like this? Whenever I talk to people from out of town, they can't believe we have something like this in a town that is of the contiguous towns, only 60,000 people. I mean, we don't talk about it being an educational opportunity very much. It's fundraising and it's cultural and it's all that. But it's really, if you look at all the young people in the cast, as they, especially ones who do it for years and years and grow up through it, it's a real educational opportunity. Once I found the center, you know, I knew I could live here because I wasn't missing out on the things that I felt a larger town had to offer. And to be part of it, to actually help bring that to other people has been one of the best things that, that's happened to me in, in living here. And so, we have returned to the Madrigal Feast every other year since, until this year. 16 productions. This too is historical. The great festivals of Christmas past were stopped by Renaissance plagues, only to return in new bloom when the sickness was ended. Each year we work to raise the bar with fine food, excellent music, beautiful visuals, an interwoven play and entertainment. And when we are allowed to do it again, we trust we can welcome you back again. And so, for now, welcome you!